Fox Sports. We are Buffalo. We are Arizona. On Monday, Justin Upton and the Braves took game one against the Diamondbacks by hitting the long ball. Tuesday, Patrick Corbin shut down the Braves' bats with the help of some D-back defense. And today, it's game three, a pitcher's duel. Tim Hudson for Atlanta, Ian Kennedy for the Diamondbacks. It's the series finale next on Fox Sports Arizona. Hot in the Valley this afternoon. Some afternoon baseball under the roof here. Nice, cozy, comfortable chase field as the Diamondbacks and Atlanta Braves are set to wrap up this three-game series. Arizona Diamondbacks baseball is presented by your local Valley Kia retailers. Good afternoon from Chase Field and welcome to the broadcast. Steve Berthune, Bob Brunley along the way. This is it for this seven-game homestand, the finale of this three-game series with the Atlanta Braves. And, uh, Bob, in this series, we've seen some tremendous defense, notably from the two shortstops, both from Curacao, both two of the more electric players in the game right now. If you love defense, you love this series. These two shortstops have put on a defensive clinic, making every play that comes their way, showing strong throwing arms. There's a general consensus that the game of baseball is swinging back to the emphasis on pitching and defense And if that's the case the Diamondbacks and Braves are in real good shape with that shortstop position And we've seen Curacao become a baseball hotbed both uh, Simmons and Gregorius from there Jerks and Profar for the Rangers as well their top prospect And so the defense will certainly be at a premium here today at Chase Field also pitching at both Tim Hudson and Ian Kennedy with good track records against the opposition here today I'm not sure what we can draw from that because yeah. obviously the players on teams in the past are different than the players on these two teams nowadays, but you can't argue with the success Tim Hudson's had against the Diamondbacks in his career. And Ian Kennedy looking to right the ship after a rocky start to the season. He's been pretty good his last couple times out. He sure has, but still a no decision there. Ian looking for his first win since opening day here at Chase Field against the St. Louis Cardinals. We'll talk more defense when we come back. Jody Jackson rejoins us. Diamondbacks have been turning some double plays behind their pitch and staff. We'll see if that can continue here today. You're watching the Arizona Diamondbacks on Fox Sports Arizona.
dollars and more, we can print that. Buy Kia, your local Kia retailers. Visit phxkia.com. And by George Brazil. George Brazil guarantees the lowest price on a new AC system. Call George today. Well, Ian Kennedy getting ready to go for the Arizona Diamondbacks here at Chase Field, ready to wrap up the series against the Braves and wrap up the homestand. Jody Jackson with you. And I was talking to Kirk Gibson about the most consistent part of his team. He said, no question, it has been our defense. And even with three errors in the last five games, the Arizona Diamondbacks still lead all of Major League Baseball in fielding percentage. And so last night, just another great effort by the defense behind Patrick Corbin. You look at the stat, 10 wins when scoring three or fewer runs. They had 11 of those all of last season. We're just at game 41 today as we speak, and it's a combination of obviously great players in the field, but as Kirk Gibson even mentioned me, the one day they put Eric Hinsky in there for first base for Paul Goldschmidt, he made a great play. He said, we know where we want to throw the ball, and we're doing it consistently. Certainly the addition of a young man like Didi Gregorius has helped, but you can't imagine a better tandem of shortstops than Gregorius and Cliff Pennington. So the defense has been strong for the Diamondbacks all season long. They look to carry that through and get a victory here. They get a win today. They can win this series against the Atlanta Braves and wrap up the homestand on a good note as they head to Miami after the game. Stay with us. First pitch coming up. Winning homestand as they close out this three-game series with the Atlanta Braves. Diamondbacks on a plane to Miami right after this game. Day off tomorrow, then a six-game road trip. Three, the Marlins beginning Friday, then it's back to Coors Field for three against the Rockies. Freddie Gonzalez, hello, Freddie. Sending Tim Hudson to the mound. Both Upton brothers in the lineup tonight. A little different look to Freddie uh, Gonzalez's lineup. They'll face Ian Kennedy here tonight in the series finale. Diamondbacks 9-3 and three in series finales this season. And here is the lineup that will face Ian Kennedy here this afternoon. Some, uh, different guys in there, Bob. Yeah, completely different looking lineup. One thing I can say for Freddie Gonzalez, he's got a strong bench today. Chris Johnson, Evan Gaddis, Dan Ugla, Chris Johnson all available off the bench, all hitting from the right side of the plate. I guess Freddie figures with Tim Hudson on the mound, uh, he's not going to need a lot of runs. So he gets some of his bench players in there for a start today. And keep in mind, this is the conclusion of a long 10-game road trip for the Braves. Our Arizona Ford Diamondback starting pitcher is Ian Kennedy. Has not won since opening day. Beat the Cardinals here. First inning is always a key for Ian Kennedy. That was the case his last time out against the Phillies. 
gave up a leadoff home run on the first pitch of the game to Jimmy Rollins. His later uh, walk came around to score, but then really settled in after that pitch. Six strong innings. Jordan Schaefer, Andrelton Simmons, and Justin Upton here in the Atlanta first finale of the seven game homestand, then it's off to Florida. Swing and a miss by Jordan Schaefer, and we're underway here on a Wednesday afternoon with the roof and panels closed. Hot outside, nice and comfortable inside here. Schaefer at 281, a homer and three RBIs. Schaefer struck out in a pinch hit appearance here last night. So one of three strikeouts in that eighth inning by David Hernandez, who has looked terrific lately. Boy, really good last night. It was one of the more awkward at bats we've ever seen from Justin Upton against David Hernandez. Yeah, that was a mismatch. Keeper Ian Kennedy always is his command of that fastball early in the ball game. If he can work it on both sides of the plate, keep it down when he wants, elevate it when he wants, it sets up all of his secondary pitches for later in the ball game. This is the Ian Kennedy arsenal. Occasionally he'll go more to that cutter if he's got a good feel for it on a given day We've seen him use the curveball a little more regularly a pitch that I think is going to be key for him But by far his best secondary pitch is that straight changeup Struck him out one up one down for Ian Kennedy good start Defensively the Diamondbacks look as such and for the third time in three games Martin Prado starts at a different position <laughs> Well, we call it musical positions so when the music stops when the anthem ends whatever glove he happens to have in his hand That's where he plays Of course, I'm just kidding But uh, it just seems like it doesn't matter who you put out there at what position all the Diamondbacks defensively have done a great job this year Andrelton Simmons looks at a strike Batting second in the order for the first time in this series. He was one for four with a single last night. Simmons single in the eighth was his only hit of the series so far. He is one for his last 19 up there. And we were kind of gushing over Simmons and D.D. Gregorius in the open of the show, and rightfully so. But, uh, boy, you talk about good shortstops in the National League, and you don't mention Gene Segura from the Brewers. You haven't been paying attention. 359 batting average, 17 multi-hit games, leads the National League in stolen bases. Another strikeout for Ian Kennedy. Good start here. Two punch outs both coming on that straight changeup has a real good feel for it early starts it right in the middle of the strike zone just lets it die down there around the knees. Here's Justin Upton. Hitless last night although he did walk twice but still quite a contrast from his big return here Monday night four for five a couple of singles a double and that long two run homer. This would be big uh, for Ian Kennedy get out with a clean first inning because it's been a real issue here. You mentioned Bob in that last start against the Phillies four hits two runs in the first inning Rollins got him again for a two out single in the second. But after that Ian retired 13 of the next 15 he faced and that's happened in his last two starts the previous start at San Diego again two runs in that first inning and then settled in and set down 12 of 14. Really looks to be locked in early here. So far, his pitches have been very crisp, right where he wants them. He's ahead here, 0 and 2. This is the way there, 1 and 2. John Hirschbeck, the crew chief, is the plate umpire today. He is not a hockey mask guy. No, old school. Going with the bird cage. Chopper up the middle, D.D. Gregorius behind the bag. A nice one, two, three first for Ian Kennedy. Bottom one coming up here at Chase.
for Ian Kennedy. Two strikeouts in a 1 2 3 first against the Braves here. And now the Diamondbacks go out there and try and deal with Tim Hudson. And Bob, the big difference here seven game homestand, three and three right now. As you get on a plane, four and three would feel a lot better than three and four. All right, that getaway day win uh, before a long road trip is always a key. And uh, this is the lineup Kirk Gibson sends out there against Tim Hudson today. Eric Chavez in that four spot has been swinging the bat extremely well. Cody Ross having a good month of May. Miguel Montero, the guy we need to get going. There's your look at the Arizona Diamondback starting lineup. That's brought to you by Scottsdale Healthcare. Tim Hudson's last start Friday in San Francisco and really had a rough time of it. Six runs all earned on eight hits and only three and two third. That after he had won four of his first five decisions this year. Checking his pulse out there on the mound. I think this is an omen, partner. <laughs> Tim Hudson has a daughter named Kennedy. How about that? Look at you and your research. <laughs> it's spelled K E N N E D I E, but I'm not a big fan of that. Now there's like seven different ways to spell Bill. Yeah. Can we just all agree on one way for every name and just go from there? <laughs> well, Tim's easy enough. Well, this guy's been one of the best in the game ever since he broke into the major leagues back in 02. Gerardo Parr leads it off. 0 oh 2 quickly here. Parr at 312 on the year, three home runs and 11 RBIs. He was one for four here last night, doubled and scored a run. That double certainly not a textbook gap double. It was his 13th <laughs> of the year, moving Gerardo one behind A.J. Pollock for the National League lead. It may not have been pretty, but it was effective. Strikes out to lead it off here against Tim Hudson. This was par last night. Market. This chopper to the right side. Some confusion between Tehran and Freeman as to who was going to make the play. Dan Ugla overran it, lost his footing, and... Just heads up base running once again by the Diamondbacks. They've been aggressive at times overly aggressive on the bases, but this was just a good example of knowing where the defenders were and realizing you could advance 90 feet. And he's running around pitchers and umpires and the whole thing. <laughs> Keeping Matt Williams busy down there at third. Here's D.D. Gregorius. One and oh. He drove in the only two runs of the game here last night. Two run single in the third. Skies one high over the shortstop. Shallow left field now. Simmons is there. Two down. First baseman, number 44. Here comes Goldie. Well, this is just the beginning of what Tim Hudson will feature out there on the mound. A two seamer, a cutter, uses that split finger a lot, has a good curve ball. He'll elevate some four seam fastballs. I mean, he's tried everything at one stage of his career or other. He just has a great feel for pitching. He has those pitches in his back pocket, and if he feels it's the right delivery at the right time, you might see him throw one curve ball all day, but it could come at a very key moment in the game. He's one of these rosin bag guys. Might throw that up there at you. <laughs> one and one now. It does get a little problematic for a catcher when you got a guy on the mound that throws more than five pitches because obviously you've only got five, four fingers and a thumb on your right hand right, to take off his glove to give signs. The you know, way you get around that is uh, you have a a one, which would be a four seam fastball, a one that wiggles, which would be a two seam fastball, a one pointing away from a right handed hitter, which would be a cutter. Two's curve, three's a slider, wiggle change up for him as a split fingered fastball. You've already lost me. Well, <laughs> I'm sure that's the way the catchers feel when they're catching Tim Hudson. Goldie won for four last night, had a single in the eighth inning. Two and two. 
tied for second in the league with 10 home runs. 31 RBIs, third in the National League. Base hit. Gets down in the gap in left center. Schaefer cuts it off. Goalie heads for second. Stand up double for Paul Goldschmidt. He's on base again. Short abbreviated swing by a big power hitter. When he catches it well, we know it goes a long way. Even when he mishits balls, he finds the gap. Two out double here in the first. And this brings up the guy who may be the hottest hitter in this lineup, Bob, Eric Chavez. Boy, and he has been raking right-handed pitching lately. 367 over his last seven, 17 games, rather. Four homers, six doubles. Just locked in. He was on base three times last night. Pair of singles and a walk. Eric five for 12 on the homestand so far. A reminder every time a Diamondbacks player hits a home run this season, Fulton Holmes will donate $150 to the Central Arizona Mountain Rescue Association. And again, with a uh, day off scheduled for tomorrow, Kirk Gibson able to take advantage of the schedule and have Eric going back to back days here. That's something that has to be managed with uh, Xavi at 35 years old. Can't push him too much. Chavez and Tim Hudson teammates for three years in Oakland. I'm sure that Eric Chavez made a lot of stellar plays down there at third base to help Tim Hudson and drove in a lot of runs, had a lot of base hits. Today he's trying to turn the tables and do some damage against a former teammate. They were both stars of those Moneyball teams. Yep. Although the, the movie Moneyball neglected to mention Tim Hudson or Mark Mulder or Barry Zito. I've, I've always hated that argument. I got to tell you, it's that's. Well, I just think they were part of the team I, as well. It, I know, but they were all Scott Hatterberg. They were all on the team when they had Giambi and Damon and those guys, and they were all on the team when they lost them. So it was more about how do we replace replace the offensive guys. Mm -hmm. I get that. We'll do a movie review show. Some other time. <laughs> Every time I see Chavez, I feel like that Brad Pitt line. Chavez, you couldn't hit that with a boat paddle. <laughs> Ground ball, Simmons, it gets through. They wave Paul Goldschmidt. Here it comes, and Eric Chavez continues to swing a hot bat. RBI single, and it's 1-0 Diamondbacks. Didn't need a boat paddle that time. Boy, I have commented repeatedly about Eric Chavez and his willingness and ability to hit the ball hard the other way. I never realized that was a big part of his game, but he shoots that one past the shortstop with tremendous range. D-backs jump out to an early lead. And that doesn't seem like a big thing here, but this is a team that absolutely has just completely dried up in two outs and runners in scoring position. And just a little thing like that, a little single through the infield to drive in a run, something we haven't seen a whole lot of yet. Here's Cody. Big difference. Second base, two outs, okay. Yep. Here's a little run. Suddenly it's a whole new ballgame. One on one now. And hopefully Eric Chavez sends a message to his teammates over there in that third base dugout. It doesn't always have to be a screaming line drive off the wall or a majestic home run. When you've got guys in scoring position, just find a hole somewhere. I'm sure many of them have tried to do that, but on occasion it looks like guys over swinging a little bit, the dreaded trying to do too much. And it's funny, not a whole lot of holes over there with Simmons and Shorts new. Dugout sweets here. Nice. Right uh, behind Matt Williams. He can coach third along with Matt there. Pretty good. You got the TVs down there.
Green one now to Cody Ross. There they are sitting right behind Matt Williams at third. If you're any closer, you'd need a uniform. Chopper to Simmons. He'll go the short way, and that's the force. We're through one. Eric Chavez, his 14th RBI of the year, a two out single, has made it 1 0 D backs. Delivered by the UPS store. What did you think? What do you think Patrick Corbin's nickname should be? Apparently, we're, we're giving him a nickname. So check in on Facebook at Fox Sports AZ on Twitter or FoxSportsArizona.com. Of course, Patrick Corbin, the first Diamondbacks pitcher to start 6 and 0 since Brandon Webb did that in 2008. As for a nickname, I hear there's some good ones, guys. So uh, if, as everyone continues to weigh in, we will hear about them a little bit later on. Corbin dioxide. Ooh. Corbin Fiber. Freddie Freeman. The Corbinator. Those are the three that come to mind. That's all I know. I'll go simple. We'll just call him Ace. Yo, Ace. Hey, Ace. How you doing, tough guy? Freddie Freeman 0 for 4 last night, and he's quickly down here. 0 and 2. I kind of like Corbin dioxide. It makes absolutely no sense, but it sounds good. <laughs> How about lefty? <laughs> Just call him whatever you want to call him every fifth day. Make sure he's out there on the mound. He has been fun to watch this year. Just don't call him late for dinner. Of course, any nickname would have to be cleared through the governor. Greg Schulte, right us alongside us here in the radio booth. This is there. It's one to two. Yeah, the gub has final say and approval. He has to get that stamp. There's the gub. All packed for Miami. He's been packed for Miami for a week. <laughs> <laughs> I know Leo Gilmartin has back in the booth. Leo's. Leo's got a South Beach attire ready to go. There's the shot of Leo. Candy's going to be thrilled that Leo made the telecast. Look at Leo so focused. He's not even aware. Hard working men in the radio booth next to us here. Freddie Freeman, Martin Prado at second base. One up, one down here in the second.
Please, dear God, please pick one of these from the D-backs fans and do not let Berthew make one up for him. Well, it's too late. I've already made up three, so meh. Wear it, Joel. <laughs> he has a point. At least he spelled my name right. That's something. Brian McCann now. <laughs> I think Joel is uh, the governor's alias, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> That's just the gov on Twitter. I don't think he is. <laughs> Brian McCann struck out in an eighth inning pinch hit appearance here last night against David Hernandez. Six-time All-Stars won five Silver Slugger Awards. And you can make a fairly compelling case that he's been one of the best catchers in the major leagues over the last decade. Broke in when he was 21. First eight major league seasons hit 279. Played 59 games his rookie year. Next seven seasons hit 151 home runs. More than any catcher in baseball over that span. Hard and through the infield. First hit of the game for the Braves. One out single for McCann here in the second. Center fielder number two. We love that uh, consistency when you know who your starting catcher is going to be. And you know he's going to play. 135, 140 games a season, run that pitching staff. What an anchor that is for any team. But now what they don't know is if he'll be here next season, right? Miggy signed up for a while, five years. Here's B.J. Upton. Upton got the night off here last night after he was hit on the shoulder by a Wade Miley pitch Monday. Missed yesterday with what they called a shoulder contusion. One one. One of the more unusual approaches. I was talking to the Braves hitting coach Greg Walker about B.J. Upton, who of course has had some monster offensive seasons. But watch the front foot. The toe comes down. And he shows the bottom of his shoe and the heel to the pitcher before dropping that heel down on the ground. It's a timing mechanism for him that can occasionally get out of whack. Nice scoop by Mickey. Wow. Quick love right there. And with the catcher running at first base, Brian McCann looked into Miggy. Miggy's staring him down out there. They exchange a smile. Well, Bob, I'd say it is out of whack. He's three for his last 22 with 11 strikeouts over that span. Stepping in here at only 151 for the season. It's been a, a rough start for B.J. as a Brave. He hit 143 in April. May hasn't been much better. He's hitting 171 this month. Numbers there against Ian Kennedy. Struck him out. Third strikeout for Ian Kennedy here. Two down in the second. Yeah, when Greg Walker was talking about this timing mechanism by B.J. Upton, he didn't look like he was real happy with it. Comes down with the toe first, shows the bottom of his cleat, then drops the heel on the ground and ultimately rolls over with his toe in the air and his heel on the ground. That's now 12 strikeouts in his last 23 at-bats. Juan Francisco. Getting the start at third base today. The home run swing right out of the gate. 271 on the air. He's gone deep five times. Got 16 RBIs.
A lot of new guys in the lineup today. Remember, this is the long-awaited end of a long 10-game road trip for the Braves. They were in Cincinnati, San Francisco, and now here. So they're a tired bunch. In fact, looking at the schedule, this is nuts. They're, Braves are in a stretch right now. They will play 56 games in 59 days. That's a lot. That's the grind. Mm -hmm. And other than the occasional excessive travel, getting in real early in the morning or real late at night, I, I think most players prefer this time of the season. They like the grind. They like the idea that every day you wake up, you've got a ball game that night. Just get into that rhythm. Get into that routine. It's Chris Johnson, former Diamondback, who started at third the last uh, two games here. Today it's Juan Francisco who's behind one and two. Swing and a miss. Four strikeouts through two and a very good start here for Ian Kennedy. Diamondbacks lead one nothing. in part by Ram Trucks, proud partner of the Arizona Diamondbacks. By Gila River, another proud partner of the Arizona Diamondbacks. And by Valley Honda, there's a great deal on every new Honda. Visit your Valley Honda dealer today or online at valleyhondadealers.com. Bottom second here, Chase Field, Diamondbacks lead at 1-0. We had 2,500 fans today take advantage of the matinee game special here, Bob, to get into Chase Field. And Miguel Montero picked... Uh, out one special fan, and there she oh, is. How about that? She says, thank you. Boy, made her day. That's nice. And here is Mickey. Leads it off against Tim Hudson. Not like the little guy who threw it back last night. Montero 0 for 3 here last night. He is 2 for his last 21. Down quickly here, 0 and 2. Tim Hudson misses there. Quite a resume, of course. Three time All Star. Finished in the top six in the Cy Young vote four times. Including 2000 when he went 20 and 6 in his second year in the big leagues. Finished second in the voting to Pedro Martinez. And that's it for Miguel Montero. Second strikeout for Tim Hudson. Hey fans, anytime the D-backs score six runs or more, Taco Bell is giving away three free tacos with the purchase of a large drink between four and six the following day at participating 
locations. Now we've got some issues here. Yeah. Seven straight games of three or fewer runs. You're getting hungry. Yes, indeed. It's time. Well, we're, we're five away. It's been eight games since we last had tacos. Martin Prado looks at a strike. Martin on base twice last night. He was hit by a pitch and singled. Oh, and two now. Prado six for 21 on the homestand so far. Base hit. Three hits now for the Diamondbacks against Hudson. Bob, I, I subscribe to the theory, and you, you use the word closure, and I, I think you were right on it. I think once this series is done and all the circus has left town, this guy's going to be locked in. Well, we certainly hope so. There's a lot of good baseball in Martin Prada. We've only seen the tip of the iceberg. His struggles, I think, at times have been magnified because he's tried so hard to fit in with his new team. But yeah, get the Braves out of town, settle into that routine we were talking about. I think he's going to be just fine. There's a strike to A.J. Pollock. I'm sure uh, Jay Up will be glad to move along as well, even though he has a home here in the Valley. It was nice to sleep in his own bed for a couple of nights, he said, but. He's going to be a star in Atlanta. I have no doubts about it. Chris Johnson, former Diamondback as well, with a day off today. AJ one for three last night, had a single. He is four for 19 in the homestand so far. Looks like AJ's wearing Paul Goldschmidt's helmet. He's got that right ear pinch. That might become a thing. Could get painful around here. Well, it works for Goldie. I think everybody will try it the way he's been hitting the ball. Everybody will show up on the bus in Miami with cowboy hats. <laughs> Raise tamales. Always remember the Seinfeld where George Costanza goes, Tamale! <laughs> Andrelton Simmons. Pollock beats it out. They can't turn two. Simmons made it look easy, but AJ got up the line. Simmons makes everything look easy when he's got that glove on his hand. Good quick feed to Payne at second base. Just too much speed for AJ Pollock for the Braves to be able to turn that. So two outs, A.J. Pollock on first, and here is Ian Kennedy, one for 16 on the year. A walk and eight strikeouts. Tim Hudson now with 201 career major league victories. That is the most ever by a former SEC pitcher. He pitched at Auburn. And it's becoming an increasingly impressive mark considering the talent that comes out of the SEC every year. Now there are some pitchers that were in the SEC at that time that would argue the fact that he was a pitcher. He hit 396 with 18 homers and 95 runs driven in. Yeah, he can hit. He's six for 17 at the plate this season. Earned all America honors from Baseball America as a utility player because he did pitch and was tremendously successful on the mound. We mentioned the offensive numbers, so they named him as a all American utility player. Sixth round pick by the A's in 1997. Ian. Fights it off. Ramiro Payne is there at second. 
And that ends the inning. We're through two here at Chase Field. Diamondbacks lead it 1-0. last year was the first time and I told him of all the three pitchers I said I'd like to face you the most if I ever did face him and uh, what I didn't realize was um, his ball moves pretty good and the sinker's late and he's got a, a cutter um, to lefties that he throws that, that's pretty good. Our Geico quote of the game from Eric Chavez. I asked him about his playing days with Tim Hudson, Mark Mulder, and Barry Zito. And as you just heard, he told Hudson, I'd rather face you than the other two guys. So interesting. Chavez, one for one so far, had the single and the RBI in that first inning, guys. But he said, in all seriousness, they are very good friends. And he reflected on his times with the A's and just talked about how great those times were. Now they're all movie stars now. Yeah. How come they never, did they call you? No. Consultant anything? No. Well, and you know, you talk about the big three for Oakland there, that Zito and Mulder left handed, so it's understandable that Shabby would say, I'd rather face <laughs> Hudson, you know. He's a right hander, but still no trip to the beach. Ramiro Pena playing second base today. Boy, back in those days, Barry Zito could buckle right handers with his curveball. Oof. And you know all those pitchers appreciated having Eric Chavez down at third base, flashing that leather. Chavi. Again, I, I don't want to belabor the point, but it's not. It wasn't a documentary about the O2 A's. It was about the idea of generating a new idea into an industry and changing the way the industry thinks. Paul Goldschmidt, what do you think about that? One away here in the third. We saw the drive off the bat of Freddie Freeman last night. Had a lot of hooking action on it. Goldie was able to stay in front, make the play on that one. That one not quite as tough, but snares it nonetheless. Here is Tim Hudson just talking about Huddy the hitter. Six for 17 on the year. He's got a double and a home run, three RBIs, two walks, and six strikeouts. So, yeah, he can hit a little bit. Right to Prado at second. Little backhanded flip. Two up, two down here in the third. Actually, with that approach at the plate, Hudson looks more like a hitter than B.J. Upton at this point. That's a nice setup there. Nice balance swing. Got the barrel on it. Thank you, Bob Brenly. Please address all letters and text to Bob Brenly, care of Chase Field. I'm just talking about appearances <laughs> right now. Upton's had himself a marvelous career over there in the American League for Tampa Bay. 
Tell you what, you want to talk about appearances. Ian Kennedy looks like a different guy out yeah, there. Yeah, he sure does. What a start. Sharp and crisp and efficient. 39 pitches, 26 for strikes. And something I talk about all the time with every starting pitcher, when you miss, miss in your favor. When he's tried to hit the corner and missed, he's missed a little farther in or a little farther away. When he's tried to elevate, he's missed a little farther up. Don't make those mistakes in the middle of the plate. Well, command for him is always so key, and Kennedy comes into this one walking over, well, just over three and a half batters a game, 3.58 per nine. That's 16th among all National League starters, so there is certainly room for improvement, and we're seeing that here so far today. In fact, Ian said after his last outing that he wished pitchers could work on their mechanics as much as hitters can. And it's something you kind of forget as fans watching the game. If a hitter is in a slump, he can take a thousand practice swings. But obviously a pitcher with a throwing arm can't do that. So he's got to watch video and just sort of sit there and think about it. And wait. Oof. Ball one, says John Hirschbeck. Take a look here on our Fox tracks. Look like a strike to me. And that was a fastball up there at the top of the zone. We talked about those breaking pitches that occasionally you will not get the call on because they're up high in the zone. D.D. Gregorius coming in. Look out. He tried a little Brad Ziegler throw there and it pulled Goldie up off the bag. Really, the only play D.D. had right there was to try to unload it as quickly as possible. Jordan Schaefer runs extremely well out of that left-handed batter's box. Good idea. Just looked like he didn't have a real good grip on that ball when he fired it across the diamond. It ended up being a submarine changeup up in the zone to Paul Goldschmidt. They rule it a base hit. So you have to watch out, as Bob mentioned, as Schaefer can run six steals already this year. He's been caught twice. Andrelton Simmons now. Two for 21. So it's been a rough go here offensively for Simmons. He took something of an unusual path to the major leagues. Didn't just uh, go play some ball in Dominican and then sign as an international free agent. He went to school, went to the U.S. Said, if I hadn't done that, my mom would not have been happy. <laughs> Got to so, keep mama happy. Yeah. So he played a season at Western Oklahoma State. Wasn't there long. That's his second division junior college and was drafted. Actually, he's a two-way player. This is a guy who was a very good pitcher, really good slider, clocked in the high 90s off the mound. Simmons uh, still nags Freddy Gonzalez to let him pitch whenever they get into extra innings. And Freddy says uh, there will be none of that. No. Yeah, the way I heard the story, uh, uh, the Braves assumed that Simmons wasn't going to hit enough or be a good enough defender, and they were going to immediately convert him into a pitcher because of that strong arm you talked about. But then they saw some of the plays he made at shortstop, swung the bat enough to get their attention, and I think he's found a home. Chavez knocks it down, long throw. Pulls Goldschmidt off the bag. Schaefer stops at second. Looks like Chavez sort of got caught hanging in midair there. Yeah, ball hit him right in the heel of the glove. I think he thought it was a little higher than it was, and as he jumped, he had that ball hit in a real bad spot in the glove. Watch where the ball hits him in the mitt. Yeah. Ricochets down off his chest, tries to stay with it, but Simmons busting it down that line. Give credit for an infield hit. So back-to-back -back singles here with two outs, and that puts two on for Justin Upton. Side one and zero. Oh. 
2-0 now. Justin Upton averaged 18 home runs per season while he was with the Diamondbacks in six years. But he hit more than 18 home runs in a year, only twice. 26 in 2009, 31 in 2011. He's got 13 so far as a Brave. Kennedy behind here, 3 0. Freddie Freeman is on deck. Justin's numbers here in Arizona 278, 108 home runs. Ball four. Not going to give him anything to hit there, Bob. Yeah, nothing really close that time for Justin Upton. I'm not sure whether it was a momentary loss of command on the part of Ian Kennedy or he just would rather take his chances with Freddie Freeman. Well, Freddie Freeman was 0 for 4 last night. He grounded out to second his first time up today. Freeman went on the DL just a week into the season with a strained right oblique. He missed 13 games. He's hit 250 in the 21 games since with one home run and 12 RBIs. And he's up there here in the third with the bases loaded and two outs. Diamondbacks lead it 1 0. Goldschmidt a double in the first. Chavez singled him home. Here's Freeman now. Bases full. Yeah, that can occasionally be a problem when you intentionally pitch around a hitter to get to the next guy and now you immediately have to try to get back into the strike zone after throwing four pitches well out of the zone to Justin Upton. That's six straight balls now for Ian Kennedy. Schaefer at third, Simmons at second, Justin Upton at first. Seven straight balls now for Ian Kennedy. Here's the 3-0 to Freddie Freeman. Eight in a row, there's a run. Charles Nagy. Oh, this is a good visit right here. Just hit the reset button. Ian Kennedy had been so good through the first two and two thirds innings of this ball game. Gave up a couple of seemingly harmless infield hits. And now just cannot find the strike zone. Eight straight balls. Now at 54 pitches, 31 for strikes. He had been sailing along nicely. One hit, a single, and four strikeouts through two. Got the first two in this inning, Pena and Hudson. But since then, single, single, walk, walk, and it's 1 1. Brian McCann now. McCann singled his last time up. And he can be a problem with the bases full. Nine consecutive balls for Ian Kennedy. There's a strike.
Simmons at third, Upton at second, Freddie Freeman at first. Bob, you ever seen anything like this? Uh, I have, unfortunately. I've been on the receiving end back there behind the plate when pitchers just completely lose their command. One thing you can try to do, uh, if I'm not mistaken, all the pitches that he's missed the zone with have been fastballs. Make him throw a curveball. Make him throw a changeup. Make him throw something where he really has to finish that pitch out in front. Maybe that'll get him back in the zone with the fastball. Skies it in the air to right center. Gerardo Parra calls off Pollock. And Ian Kennedy gets out of it, but one run in will go bottom three. It's 1 1. CenturyLink, your link to what's next, the top of the order featuring Gerardo Parra. This is how a Major League Baseball team travels. Clubhouse attendance, JC, Lupe, Sean, Jimmy all loading up the bags. Those are all the players' luggage that goes on the truck. The truck drives out to the airport, loaded up on the plane, and off we go to Miami and Colorado. Now you can always tell when there's an off day on a road trip because you'll see uh, numerous sets of golf clubs make their way onto that <laughs> Those are the uh, pitchers, in. Yeah, yeah, the guys that uh, have a day off and take the opportunity to go out and pound it around a little bit. Tony's out there with him as well. That's our Ram Trucks tools of the trade. Is that's life on the road in the major leagues. Gerardo Parra, Didi Gregorius, and Paul Goldschmidt here in the Diamondbacks third against Tim Hudson. One one now. Parra struck out his first time up. When you talk about the unsung heroes in the game of baseball, Roger Riley and those guys on the clubhouse staff that we just mentioned. They're here hours before the players get here every day. They're here hours after the players leave every night. And when the plane lands here back home in the middle of the night at 3 or 4 in the morning, they are waiting for the plane. And they do a tremendous job. I mean, you can imagine you moms out there, the mountains of laundry that those guys do on a daily basis. You know, there's early work, there's extra hitting, guys change uniforms sometimes two or three times a day. Tim Hudson. It was interesting, Bob, and listen to the sound bite we played a moment ago from Eric Chavez talking about facing Hudson and finding out, yeah, his stuff really moves. It has a snap, crisp sharp sound in the mitt that you don't hear with some other pitchers. Mm -hmm. So Parra has now struck out and walked leadoff man on here in the third. There's a snap when it hits the glove that you can hear up here. Shortstop, D.D. Gregorius. And 
certainly a lot of that credit has to go to Brian McCann behind the plate. Pitchers love to throw to catchers who make their stuff sound fast. It sounds really crisp and sharp like it would be hard to handle here, like it would break some bats. Which is exactly what Eric Chavez was talking about, this, the movement on the pitch. This is crisp. Didi Gregorius popped up his first time up. See if he can pick this up. That's, what, that's the way it's supposed to sound. Mm -hmm. And the bullpen's here at Chase Field down the right and the left field line because they're semi enclosed. When pitchers go down there to warm up, the acoustics make everybody sound like they're throwing 150 miles an hour. <laughs> hey, yeah, the, the brick wall, the little padded area on the back there. And man, when that ball smacks into the mitt, it sounds fast. Mentioned Tim Hudson with 201 career wins. It's kind of like 200 wins has become what 300 used to be. Look out, Freddie Freeman. In fact, the only other active pitchers with 200 career wins are Andy Pettit and Roy Halladay. CC Sabathia is the closest to joining the club at 195, but after that, that's it. There's a big drop off, and it really does make you appreciate what Tim Hudson has done here. One and one now. In fact, only six pitchers in baseball history have at least 200 wins with a better winning percentage than Tim Hudson. I mean, look at this list: Whitey Ford, Pedro Martinez, Lefty Grove, Christy Mathewson, Roy Halladay, and Roger Clemens. Those are the only pitchers who have won at least 200 games with a better winning percentage than Tim Hudson. And he has won 16 games each of the last two years. He's never had a losing season as a professional. In this now his 15th big league season. Of course, he had Tommy John surgery back in August of 08. He'll turn 37. He'll turn 38 in July. Didi Simmons, can they turn it here? Pena. Double play. So two quick outs there for Tim Hudson, and now here's Paul Goldschmidt. AT&T Twitter poll, what's the best way to spend an off day in Miami? This is a question that has plagued the entire staff here with the travel day after the game tonight, then the day off tomorrow before the game against the Marlins on Friday. Either go to the beach, Cuban food, golf. We saw the golf clubs out there at the truck. Or just hit South Beach. Tweet your vote to at Fox Sports AZ. Do you have an, uh, an agenda for tomorrow? Thinking about going to the Everglades and wrestling some gators. Pretty standard thing for you, right? Yeah. yeah. Do that around Whenever here I have with a the coyotes. A little free time. I like to get back to nature. Yeah, I did see uh, grab a pole and go fishing on our list. So there you go. Well, I've so the stories you've told me. I know you don't need a, a standard fishing destination. You'll you'll drop a line in anywhere. Absolutely. There's a little watering hole out behind the hotel. If there's a golf course close, Paul Goldschmidt lines one down the left field line. Here goes Goldie again. Two at bats, two doubles for Paul Goldschmidt today. So still in that batter's box. No movement of his head whatsoever. That brings up Eric Chavez. We were in the same situation back in the first. Goldschmidt had a two out double. Chavez an RBI single. See if we can go two for two here. Eric has now hit safely in 15 of his last 18 games. He's hit almost 350 over that stretch with four homers. 
Six doubles and 13 RBIs. Now McCann wants to have a conversation. Well, I talk about how still Paul Goldschmidt is in that batter's box. Eric Kinski pointed us out to us earlier this season. We got a box kind of around the head and shoulders right there. Paul Goldschmidt. His head will not leave that box. Very still, especially when he starts forward. His head just stays right there. Eliminates any movement. I mean, the ball is going to move enough coming from the pitcher to home plate. If your head is moving and you're going up and back and forth and out toward the mound, it's going to be very tough to square up a pitch that's moving. Look out! What do we say about Tim Hudson's? What did Eric Chavez say about Tim Hudson's ball moving, yeah. breaking bats? That was sawed off right at the handle. Hope everybody's okay down there. They're waving it off. Looks like everybody's going to be all right. Right in on the knuckles of Eric Chavez that time. Ooh, about 90% of the bat ended up going over that first base dugout, but fans over there ready for it. Three sixteen this month with runners in scoring position this season. He's been delivering big time here in May. Flying objects. Doesn't say just baseballs. You never know what might leave the field to play. Might be Baxter. He might come diving in on you. We've seen that happen many times. It's not pretty. Two and two now. Eric Chavez, six for 13 on the homestand. In terms of finding a bat to, I don't know if you want to use the word protect, that's the one that gets thrown around a lot, but to put behind Paul Goldschmidt, so far so good. This is a nice setup right here. Righty, lefty. This is a battle. This is the money ball battle right here. Somebody's going to have to call his bat company. He's already broken two in this at bat. He just said, get some more ready. I'm going to need more than this. <laughs> Gone through the whole collection here. It's only the third inning. Two and two now. Up there in the Friday's front row sports grill, high above left field. Great view, good food. Hi. Go D backs. Go D backs. All right. Seventh pitch of the at bat coming up here. Do I hear eight? This is the money ball battle. Two veteran guys. I'm going to do my thing. You're going to do yours. One of us is going to win. And I've said it before. Normally, I give the edge to the hitter in at bats like this. You see, you see everything the other pitcher has to throw, but that's not necessarily the case with Tim Hudson. He might invent something right here that <laughs> Eric Chavez has never seen before. A little Ephus pitch. In fact, they run out of signs. Going to have to run through them again with all these pitches. Chavez left field Schaefer tracking it down and he's there in the gap once again Eric Chavez is opposite field power but Schaefer is there and that's the inning we're through three it's one one.
find local sports coverage you can't find anywhere else, like Jack Gruder's analysis from today's series finale. Craig Morgan has a story on Carson Palmer as he gets acclimated to Cardinals camp and the new offense during minicamp. And lots more on the Suns coaching job. Read it all right now at FoxSportsArizona.com. Upton Francisco Pena, 6, 7, and 8 here in the fourth against Ian Kennedy. DJ Upton gets one up and in. He struck out his first time up. Two now. BJ Upton, first round pick by Tampa Bay at 02, the second player selected overall. And if you want to play revisionist scouting, the top five that year didn't go too well. He was the, uh, the cream of the crop in the top five. 2002 top five Brian Bullington, BJ Upton, Chris Grueler, Adam Lowen, and Clint Everts. It is an inexact science. Yes, indeed. That's good proof right there. Pulls it down the line. Foul. Three things to know about BJ and Justin Upton. They are brothers. Only two sets have been drafted in the top five. And they hit their 100th career home runs on the same day. How about that? That's amazing. BJ stands for Boss Man Jr. Upton's father, Manny, the original Boss Man, a baseball and football player at Norfolk State University. Bring him up, sit him down. Fifth strikeout for Ian Kennedy. BJ was headed toward first. Now he'll go back to the dugout after a little chat with John Hirschbeck. Maybe one of the red seams caught the edge of the black there. Apparently. I had Doug Harvey, an umpire that was lovingly called God throughout his umpiring career because he actually told me that one time. We were playing a spring training game in Yuma, Arizona, that doggone bat. And uh, I took a call third strike, went in and put my catcher's gear on, came back out to catch the next half inning, and just casually asked, hey, Doug, where did you have that pitch? And he said, son, one of the red seams caught the corner of the black. Now, how do you argue with that? <laughs> you really saw that? Yes, I did. That's why everybody called him God. B.J. Upton just said, holy something else. Mm -hmm. One and two now to Juan Francisco. Francisco struck out his last time up. And as he showed in that first at bat back in the second inning, he will chase the high fastball. <laughs> he swung at two that were almost over his head. He will strike out a lot so far this year. 34 strikeouts and 86 at bats. It's trendy in this lineup. Maybe he just wants to fit in. Yeah. Kind of reminds you a little bit of, uh, what was his name, Randall Simon? Yeah. Very free swinging left hander. He'd swing at pitches over his head. He'd swing at pitches that bounced out in the infield grass. But he would uh, swing at sausages in Miller Park <laughs> <Yeah>. as well <laughs> and make good contact. That's what uh, he'll probably be best known for. Six strikeouts for Ian Kennedy. And as you said, Bob, he likes the high ones. Yes, he does. <laughs> wow. And we talk about it all the time. If you have a weakness in your swing, if you have a hole in your swing, Major League pitchers will find it and they will wear it out. That pitch shoulder high from any angle. 
Ramiro Pena. Lined out to Paul Goldschmidt his first time up. Pena not hitting a whole lot, batting 194 over his last 17 games, but only five of those have been starts. He is six for his last 32 up there. Ian Kennedy locked in and ready to go here from the Wade Miley School. Once again, hard to Paul Goldschmidt, and once again, Goldie's got it. We'll go bottom four, it's 1 1. Join us for these upcoming games. May 27th, game one of the doubleheader. The first 5,000 fans get this snapback cap, courtesy of Budweiser. Then on June 8th, before the Diamondbacks and Giants 7-10 game, first 20,000 fans get the Aaron Hill bicycle bobblehead, courtesy of Arizona Sports 620. 1,000 lucky fans will get a silver slugger edition. And on July 5th, 20,000 fans get the Stars and Stripes t-shirt, courtesy of Ram Trucks. These are all games you don't want to miss, so check them out. All the giveaways online and pick up your games at dbacks.com slash four pack. Here's Cody Ross. Starts off the fourth. First game, go D-backs. See, she's a little spoiled now, though. She thinks every time she goes to a ball game, you get to sit and have lunch. And people wait on your table. Wait, you mean you don't? <laughs> Great seats, though. That's a heck of a vantage point to watch a ball game right there. Not comfortable, too. You just got a nice table, all your food there. Oh, yeah, it's mom's birthday, too. Big day. Big day at the ballpark. I guess the only downside to that particular seat is if you happen to be out there while the Braves are taking batting practice. Yeah, you better get under the table. Two and two now to Cody. Cody Ross hitting 367 over his last 10 games. Yeah, some barking coming from that first base dugout and John Hirschbeck. Has to rip off his mask and acknowledge it. Well, based on what happened to BJ Upton, I think Freddie has a case. Cody chases one down and away. There's the strikeout. One away here in the fourth. Catcher. 
Isn't there a moment, Bob, where the umpire just has to say enough is enough? Yeah, but usually it's not after the first time a guy yells from the dugout. I mean, you know, obviously a lot has changed in the game, and certainly the personalities of the umpires have changed over the years. And you used to understand that not everybody's going to agree with every call, and you'd let them speak their piece, and you'd keep your head pointed toward the field, and the game would move on. But it seems like with more and more regularity, the umpires want to rip off masks and yell back. Andrelton Simmons, two up, two down here in the fourth. He's keeping an eye over there, that's for sure. Grab it. Now, will the umpire ever deliver a message through the catcher? Oh, sure. He go in there and tell him to knock it off? Yeah, or worse, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> tell that Bren later. Yeah. Freddie's a little less obvious than he was before. Martin Prado. Well, Freddie's taking over for the master, Bobby Cox. Bobby was a bench jockey. 100 and 40, 150, however many ejections it was for Bobby Cox. And I said this before, I bet most of them were in the first and second inning of a ball game when he would be arguing for the strike zone for his pitcher. Yeah, Bobby would sit on the back of the dugout bench while his team was hitting. But when his pitcher went out to take the mound, he'd go to the far end of the dugout, as close to that home plate umpire as he could get. And every pitch that he felt should be a strike, he would point out to the home plate umpire. Now, I sit in those dugouts all the time you, you can't see anything from in there H how can you really make the argument that you can see what is inside or outside well you really can't you <laughs> just have to trust your catcher you know you, you see where the catcher sets up you see where he receives the ball and you have an idea whether it was a strike or not Ooh, close. and Drilton Simmons Prado makes it close that's the fourth it's 1-1 here in Chase The Diamondbacks headed to Miami after today's game for a three-game weekend set with the Marlins. And so with that, we ask you, what would you do on your off day in Miami as the Diamondbacks have tomorrow? Go to the beach, eat Cuban food, go golfing, cruise South Beach. And I would say you all have the right idea, 88% saying go to the beach. And, you know, I grew up about a half a mile from the beach in Hallandale, Florida, which is just north of Miami. And Oddly enough, the Diamondbacks are staying on the beach, and so I think that's going to be my plan, guys. What about you? BB's wrestling gators. That's right. <laughs> Blindfolded. <laughs> With one hand tied behind my back. Tim Hudson, Jordan Schaefer, and Andrelton Simmons, 9-1-2 and two here in the Braves fifth. The 1-1 game here at Chase Field, series finale. And then it's off to Miami after this one, first of three against the Marlins on Friday. What do you got going, partner? You know, I, I, I got nothing. I'll probably be in the hotel room looking up 
Miami Marlins stuff because <laughs> since they don't really have any major league players, they yeah. require extra research. Lomo's hurt. Maybe I'll call him. You know what I, I usually do is I follow I go to Mitch and Bill our esteemed director and producer find out what they're doing and I usually get dragged into that with bail money with the, yes well there was the one time <laughs> actually Mitch had his head quite a run here big rock and roll guy Mitch our director yeah. Mitch Reagan every time he he'll show up to the game and there's some rockers in the house he'll go hey I got backstage passes for so-and-so they're in town then he, show, he shows up the next day did he go? Yes, he did. There's the strikeout. That's seven for Ian Kennedy. Then Mitch will show up the next day, and I'll say, hey, how was the so-and-so show? And he's like, oh, great, but I, I forgot my phone. Left my phone there. Left my watch there. Left my wallet there. Well, not only that, but many times Mitch ends up on stage playing drums. Yes, he has the uh, iPhone videos to prove it. Jamming with a couple of guys. He saw Prince. I think it was in San Diego. He caught Prince at some little club. I don't think I would make it. You know how this is, you always leave no man behind and sometimes you just have to move on and I, I think I'd end up being that guy. <laughs> Jordan Schaefer single and scored his last time up. It's a dangerous group when you give them a day off. I mean, you know, Milwaukee, that's one thing. Miami, that's next level. I know in trips past to Miami, guys have rented jet skis, gone out in the surf. Oh, that's a good call. Yeah. Get a 55-gallon drum of sunscreen and bathe in it, and then go out on the on the water. Schaefer bunts it to Prado. Here he comes. Oh. Try the spinning backhand flip, and it rolls down the right field line. Schaefer stands at second. And we've seen in this series, Bob Martin try to be very aggressive and sometimes too much so. Yeah, I mean, uh, good thought here. Would have been a tremendous play had he been able to execute it, but uh, sometimes you just have to, in the back of your mind, I talk about that stopwatch all the time, and a guy like Jordan Schaefer, who runs as well as he does, even with that backhanded blind toss on to Goldie, if you complete it, he's probably going to leg it out anyway. Why risk Allowing him to move up 90 more feet. The Braves now have four hits. None of the last three have left the infield. Andrelton Simmons now singled his last time. He drives it to center. A.J. Pollock trying to track it down near the pool. And A.J. on the run. And there's a defensive run save. Schaefer has to get back to second. A.J. Pollock in center field tracks it down. Boy, that looked like extra bases off the bat. A.J. never takes his eye off the ball. He had to go a long way to catch that one. Braces himself up against the wall out there in front of the RamTrucks.com pool. Hustles it back in. Schaefer had gone almost three-quarters of the way to third base, thinking that ball was going to get down. So two outs now for Justin Upton. He walked his last time up. Schaefer speed at second base. He's a guy who can and will run on you. 22 stolen bases, 2011. 23 last season for the Astros. Well, if he tries to run in this situation and gets thrown out of third base, he needs to go find somewhere to hide because he would not be welcome back in that first base dugout. Make the third out at third base with Justin Upton at the plate. What is wrong with you, son? Out of play. Eighty six pitches now for Ian Kennedy, fifty one for strikes. Yeah. 
This is inside one and two. Too big a carom for Ernie Young down there, or Golden Glover down the left field line. Pick your battles, Ernie. Hang and change up that time to Jay up. That ball was hit real hard down that third baseline foul. There's Ernie Young manning the left field line. Ron Pennington over and right. Our Golden Glovers today. One and two now. It was worth a shot throwing that breaking pitch out there in the left handed batter's box. That's uh, the location that David Hernandez got up to swing at a slider last night. Three and two. Freddie Freeman is on deck. Ball four. Justin Upton second walk. Bob, are you a believer in protection in the lineup? Because that's a great situation. You've got first base open. Upton's up there. It's three and two. You're looking for one more out, but then you got Freeman looming on deck. What do you feel about that? Well, I think there's something to be said for, you know, having your best hitters bunched together in a lineup where it makes it tough for an opposing pitcher to, to decide who he wants to go after and who he wants to pitch around. I like having as many good hitters in a row as I can. <laughs> That's just me. One or two good pitchers at the top of the rotation yeah. doesn't hurt her. That works. Either. Freddie Freeman looks at the ball, 1 0. He walked his last time up. But I, I've sat in on enough advanced meetings to know that uh, that's a topic of conversation. You know, hey, this guy's swinging the bat really well right now. If he comes up with a chance to hurt us, the guy behind him has been struggling. We're going to pitch around him. We're going to walk him intentionally. We're going to hit him. We're not going to pitch to him if he's got a chance to beat us. Now, Ian's in another one of those modes we saw last time he worked this portion of the order. That was in the third inning. He started the third inning with two quick outs. Perfect. The first four hitters of that inning, he threw 13 pitches. Then 11 balls out of the next 13 to the next three hitters. Where he walked up and walked Freeman. 2 0 now. Skies it in the air, left side foul. I mean, for me, obviously, the best illustration of that was Barry Bonds when he was just setting the world on fire. It didn't matter who was hitting behind Barry Bonds. He, he, if you had a chance to take the bat out of his hands, you did. If he could either tie the game or give the Giants a lead, just walk him. Forget it. We'll take our chances with whatever player they want to run up there after Barry. We're going to take our chances with him. Will Harrison, Matt Reynolds are up. So Ian Kennedy wanted to go through the signs one more time. So Miguel Montero goes to the mound just to make sure here. With Freeman ahead, two and one. Yeah, Schaefer's been out there at second base for a long time, not insinuating anything, but when the runner's been out there peering in at your signs for a couple of at bats, it's wise to go out there and at least change your signs or talk about it. Let your infielders know that you're going to change the signs. Center field, they won't get that one. It's down in the gap. Schaefer scores. Justin Upton will score. Freddie Freeman stops at second base with a two run double, and it's 3 1 Atlanta. problem with pitching around somebody in the lineup is you have to execute good pitches to that next hitter to try to get him out. 
Freddie Freeman went down and got that one, golfed it into the gap in left center field with a little bit of an inside out swing. Justin Upton streaking all the way around from first base with two outs in the inning. He was off on contact and scores without a play. Charles Nagy is out to the mound again to have a conversation with Ian Kennedy and Miguel Montero here. Ian has been over 100 pitches in each of his last five starts. His season high is 111. That was Sunday in San Diego. He'll work to Brian McCann here. McCann has singled and flied out. He's one for two. Is that the kind of conversation where eventually you tell a guy, okay, this is going to be your last hitter? Well, I can't speak for Charlie Nagy. I never like to tell a pitcher this could be your last hitter. Empty the tank kind of a thing. I think Ian's been around long enough to know. They're at that point in the dugout where it's a three or four man conversation. maintenance Brian McCann's busting panels down there going back to Atlanta after this game we'll just send the bill there pitch number 100 on the way 99 so far 58 for strikes In Kennedy, seven strikeouts. He has walked three. Give it up five hits. Straight up in the air. Prado behind the bag at second. And that's the inning. But the Braves get two across on Freddie Freeman's two run double. They lead it 3 1. Softball championships presented by Farmers Insurance will be televised right here on Fox Sports Arizona with coverage beginning at 3. For division matchups, check out FoxSportsArizona.com. We've got some finals. Desert Christian won the Division 4 championship under head coach Grant Hopkins. Division 3 was won by Fountain Hills. Head coach Mike Brahulio is fourth championship in 16 years at Fountain Hill. There's a reason he's in the Arizona Baseball Coaches Hall of Fame. Division 2. Notre Dame Prep and Scottsdale, their first championship 
been in the championship game four times. They finally win one under coach Brian Fisher and Desert Mountain upsets Chaparral. Chaparral won nine of the last 14 championships in Division One. Desert Mountain under coach Brian Stevenson wins their first championship. Congratulations to all. A.J. Pollock to Andrelton Simmons. And there's one away here in the fifth as the Diamondbacks get set to wrap up this seven-game homestand traveling to Miami after this one. They'll open up a three-game set with the Marlins. And I, I know, Bob, this was this is what you have planned. Well, Bo, bow can, hunting for Gators. If I can't find anything bigger, I'll, I'll wrestle that one. Wow. With a bow and arrow. Whew. Man, I, I've been out in the Everglades fishing a few times, and, uh, you know, my afternoon was interrupted by gators it's it's a scary feeling when you've got a bass on the line and the water's starting to splash a little bit and you see that torpedo moving towards your boat jason kubel will hit for the pitcher here that ends ian kennedy's day jason kubel two for his last 19 up there and five for 30 since coming off the DL. A lot of people wondered why Jason wasn't in the lineup today against the right-hander. That was a hot topic on the Twitter. Yeah, Kubo had you know, decent numbers and a fairly small sample size. Three for 10 with a home run against Tim Hudson. take away anything from Ian Kennedy today just the inconsistency that usually rears its ugly head in the first inning uh, came a little bit later in the ball game today looked really good through the first two and the first two outs in the third inning and a couple of infield hits a couple of walks a clean fourth inning and then in the fifth just the inconsistency with his command Second walk issued by Tim Hudson so Kubel's aboard with one out and here is the top of the order Gerardo Parra I mean, this is one of those games if you ducked in and out of the ballpark and watched certain innings of Ian Kennedy, you say, man, he pitched really well today. And if you saw other innings, you'd go, man, he was all over the place. Yeah. Tough to figure. Parra has struck out and walked 0 for 1. He's hit safely in eight of his last nine games, batting 371 over that stretch. Two and oh. Can't see something he doesn't like here. And while we congratulated all the state championship teams in high school baseball. We also want to wish good luck to the Grand Canyon University Antelopes. They're headed up to Dixie State to play in the Division II Western Regional. Good luck to the Lopes. Reynolds is ready. Braves in the top of the six will have DJ Upton, Juan Francisco, and Ramiro Pena scheduled to hit. Andrelton Simmons smothers it but has no play. Pars aboard. He is something though. We talked about this in the open, Bob. It's just great body control, great field awareness. We talked about that explosive throwing arm that he features. He's frustrated with himself. He wasn't able to get an out somewhere on that play. That's a nice job just keeping the ball out of the outfield right there. Fifth hit for the Diamondbacks. So they have two on with one out here. And here's D.D. Gregorius is 0 for 2. D.D. has popped out and hit into a double play. I think 
that ball uh, missed Brian McCann completely and got the home plate umpire John Hirsch back. I've said it before. There's no such thing as a bad block, even if you happen to use the umpire. And this is a professional courtesy. Usually we see the umpire sweep off home plate and stall for time when a catcher gets hit by a foul tip or a ball in the dirt. But this time it's Brian McCann out to the mound talking to Tim Hudson, giving John Hirschbeck a chance to regroup. And it's interesting that Hirschbeck does seem quite content to let them chat. Usually the guy's out there after about five seconds. John was, uh, you guys take all the time you need. I'll be here. A little thank you there. So it's 1 and 0 oh now to DD. Up the middle and it gets through. They'll wave Kubel. Here he comes. Para stops at second. RBI single for DD Gregorius and it's a 3-2 Braves lead. He's now hit safely in 15 of his first 18 games as an Arizona Diamondback. A lot of hits back up the middle of the field, even with Andrelton Simmons playing shortstop. Wasted dive right there, doesn't even come close to that one. And so Didi, who drove in the only two runs of the game last night with a two-run single in the third, has an RBI single here in the fifth. And it's a one-run game again. Diamondbacks have something going. Still first and second with a one out. Hudson at 78 pitches. 46 for strikes. Well, it goes without saying, this is a big at bat in the ball game right here for a team that's had trouble, trouble scoring runs lately. Trouble with runners in scoring position. You've got the hottest hitter in the lineup up at the plate with a couple of guys on base. A chance to really blow this one open. Let's give Jason Kubel some credit for drawing that walk, and that's the run that scored. It always is. Paul Goldschmidt is two for two with a pair of doubles. He scored a run. Kimbrell, but not going to warm up. Still quiet out there. The pitch count not an issue at all at this point for Tim Hudson. It's more a question of effectiveness, and is he still throwing his pitches uh, with the same kind of crispness and location as he was earlier in the ball game? He's thrown as many as 105 in six innings earlier this year against the Colorado Rockies. One and one. Goldie second in the league, 10 home runs, 31 RBIs, third in the National League. And in a big RBI spot here. Ronald Parra with four stolen bases. He's been caught five times. Kind of a nudge on the base path, so they're keeping an eye out. Right field, foul. This is a good example of Paul Goldschmidt. An unusual hitter in one regard. He's got the size and the strength, and you see that mold of the big power hitting first baseman, but he grinds out at bats like the little pesky grinder type. Like a scrappy little second baseman or something. Bring him up, sit him down. John Hirschbeck says strike three. I have my doubts. Hudson with that tailing fastball off the outside corner. Way to take the air out of the balloon, John. 
Eric Chavez one for two RBI single back in the first. These two had an epic battle in the last at bat. Eventually won by Hudson when Xavi flied out to left on a ball that Schaefer tracked down in the gap. Yeah, hit very well to left field, however, off the bat of Chavez. Showing that opposite field pop. This was after the last at bat, the two former Oakland A's teammates. Right after Eric had flied out and fouled off about 30 pitches in doing so. And now they're at it again here. Not smiling now. Two and one. Isn't it at all hard to do that? To go right back into attack mode where you're just. Chat and Wayne smiling up with a guy a couple of innings ago. Yeah, I don't think so. I, you know, I think they can separate uh, between innings from the actual competition during the inning. At least these two guys can. They've been at it for a long time. Once or twice. Two and two. That Tim Hudson splitter. Good off speed pitch, good downward movement as that ball gets into the hitting zone. Same arm action as his fastball. Center field, BJ Upton on the run, and it gets down. Para scores. Here comes Didi Gregorius, and Eric Chavez has done it again. A two run double, and the Diamondbacks take the lead. Perfectly split the gap, slicing away from the center fielder B.J. Upton. He's got great speed. Looked like initially he might have a chance to catch up to that ball, but it just kept slicing farther and farther away from him until ultimately it splits that gap, scoring two. Nice job. He is seven for 15 on this homestand. Here's Cody Ross, struck out his last time up. If Chavez and Hudson happen to cross paths again at the end of this inning, I don't think it'll be quite so cordial. You know? <laughs> and Bob, this is a trend that's finally is reversing itself here. Hey, somebody had to get it started. A regression to the mean, as some would say. Three runs here in, in the inning. One and one now. Hubel walked. Parra single. Gregorius RBI single. Chavez two run double. Four three Diamondbacks. They've out hit Atlanta seven to five. Rory Garrett warming up for the Braves. 89 pitches. Number 90 on the way here. So far 53 for strikes. That is a fair ball. Down the right field line. Here comes Chavez. Justin Upton fields it. Cody stops it first. RBI single for Cody Ross. And the Diamondbacks lead it 5 3. Well, I said at the time, Paul Goldschmidt's at bat could be the biggest AB in the game. It turned out to be a called strike on a pitch out of the zone, but Eric Chavez and now Cody Ross picking up the slack. A couple of big two out RBIs. Let's see if Miguel Montero can keep this thing going now. Diamondbacks with four here in the fifth.
Mickey has struck out and grounded out 0 for 2. 2 for his last 23. Two and one. They're coming into the game today, the D-backs had just 32 out RBIs on the season, by far the fewest in the majors. They picked up four of those today. They have had a walk and four base hits here in this inning. Right to Francisco at third, and that ends it. But the Diamondbacks with a four on fifth. They take a 5 3 lead. The big hit in the inning. The cleanup man in a battle of former Moneyball Oakland A's. Eric Chavez helps make it 5 3 Diamondbacks. Two out RBI hits in that inning. They get four across against Tim Hudson. And they take the lead here at the grab and go section outside section 104. Get your favorite Pepsi products. Grab it and go, and you're right back to your seats. One of the many fan friendly amenities here at Chase Field. And on the list of fan friendly amenities, let's also include the pool area. Ramtrucks.com pool. Get in there! Crowded out there today. Yeah, good day for some pool action. Nice work. New pitcher for the Diamondbacks taking over for Ian Kennedy. This is Matt Reynolds, the big lefty. He's been fan friendly this year, too. Yep. Really, really good coming out of that D backs bullpen, getting some big outs, eating up some big innings. He'll face B.J. Upton, Juan Francisco, and Ramiro Pena, 6, 7, and 8 here at the Braves sixth. Diamondbacks now lead at 5-3. They have out hit Atlanta 8-5. B.J. Upton has struck out twice the last time, though, on a very questionable call third strike by John Hirschbeck. Started a whole lot of chirping from the Braves dugout. Chavez at third, fair ball. He just makes that look so easy. Never rushes, takes his time. And Paul Goldschmidt scoops it up, one away here. Third baseman, Francisco. Yeah, you're right, just very relaxed, a crossover step, backhanded the ball, knew he had plenty of time to make the throw across the diamond. Plants his feet, makes sure he has a real good grip on the baseball, does all of that very quickly. 
just very casual about it. Not in a cavalier way, but I, you know, I've done this once or twice before kind of a way. Juan Francisco has also struck out his last two, two times up. He is 0 for 2. Ian Kennedy had seven strikeouts. Four of them were B.J. Upton and Juan Francisco. One and one. Matt Reynolds gave up two runs on four hits in one inning in his last appearance. That was in Sunday's loss to the Phillies. He was the losing pitcher in that game. And, of course, prior to that, Matt had given up just 10 hits over 19 scoreless appearances. He had issued only one walk during that span, 16 strikeouts and 17 and two-thirds. Pick a high fastball here. It's worked before. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, he finally laid off one. He can progress. Juan Francisco from the Dominican Republic, signed by the Reds in 2004. Traded to the Braves last April for J.J. Hoover. Didn't hold up there. Two outs in the sixth. So three at bats, three strikeouts for Juan Francisco. Second baseman, Ramiro Pena. Ramiro Pena has twice lined out to Paul Goldschmidt at first. Good crowd here today. Our fans took advantage of the walk up matinee pricing. Nice and comfortable in here. Watch some Diamondbacks baseball. Romero Pena, six for his last 33. Base hit. He was right on that one. They will pinch hit here for Tim Hudson. Hudson's day is over. Here comes Reed Johnson. Number seven. Ice cream is melting. Johnson. So Reed Johnson comes in here. He'll hit with two outs and a man on in the sixth. And that takes care of Hudson's day. Johnson was on base three times last night. Had a double, a single, and a walk. And this is the numbers for Tim Hudson. Five earned on eight hits and five. And a very good outing until that fifth. He gave up four runs on four hits. Three of the runs coming with two outs. Double by Chavez, single by Ross. Johnson to center. A.J. Pollock won't get that one. Pena stops at second. Two on and two out here for the Braves. Top of the order coming up. I like that term you use, partner, nudge. Reed Johnson has been a nudge against left-handed pitching his whole career. Sure has. I mean, you go back to the start of the 3 season, Left Reed field. Johnson is seventh in the major leagues against left-handed pitching with a 312 batting average, and that's not a small sample size. 1,299 at bats. Well, I like the way you put it. He, he's really carved a nice niche for himself. This is his 11th year in the big leagues. He's played with Toronto, the Cubs, Atlanta, the Dodgers. Came over to the Braves along with Paul Mahalam at the deadline last season. And he's back this year as a free agent. Here's Jordan Schaefer, top of the order. He singled his last two times up. Two for three. Two singles, a strikeout. He's also scored twice. Matt Reynolds needs to wrap up this inning right here. And he's ahead 0-2.
One and two missed outside. Find it interesting that Freddy Gonzalez does not go to one of his right handed thumpers he has available on the bench. Part of that could be the fact that Gibby has a right hander up in the bullpen, but he's got some serious thunder available on that bench from the right side. Oh, John Hirschbeck. He set up away right to the glove. Just a little too much out there. Two and two now. Yeah, there's some power sitting on that bench if you need a pinch hitter, that's for sure. Especially from that right side. They go there again and again it misses, so he's running full three and two. Andrelton Simmons is on deck. Ramiro Pena at second, Reed Johnson at first. Runners take off, lifts it up, high left side, Chavez in foul ground in front of the Diamondbacks. Dug out and he's there. And Matt Reynolds strands two. Century Link, your link to what's next. Martin Prado with the Diamondbacks leading the Braves. Brought to you in part by CenturyLink, your link to what's next. By Mazda, we believe if it's not worth driving, it's not worth building. And by Jack in the Box, the Chipotle Chicken Club combo is back for a limited time at Jack in the Box. Try one today with fries and a drink for just $4.99 plus tax. Diamondbacks trying to make it a winning homestand here. They lead the Braves 5-3 as we're set for the bottom of the sixth here at Chase Field, a new pitcher for Atlanta. This is the right-hander, Corey Gearin. Basically a fastball slider guy. Has a changeup that he'll use occasionally to a left-handed hitter. Martin Prado leads it off here in the sixth. Prado was one for two, singled in the second, grounded out his last time. Freeman will have a play in front of the Atlanta dugout. Foul ground, one away. Center field, AJ Pollock is 0 for 2. He reached on a fielder's choice and grounded out. AJ 4 for 21 on the homestand. 
made a spectacular running catch in the gap and right center earlier in the game. Covered a tremendous amount of ground to track a ball down in that corner. Right in front of the pool. 14 doubles still leading the National League. One ahead of Gerardo Parra and Washington's Ian Desmond. A.J. first round pick by the D-backs in 09. The 17th player selected overall out of Notre Dame where he played third base in his first season in South Bend. He was just the fourth freshman ever to lead the Fighting Irish in batting average. He had 372 at Notre Dame as a freshman. Two and two. Third base, Francisco coming in. Nice play, two down. Troublesome trend, batting with two outs. Marsh scoring position. Look at today, five for ten with two outs. Don't forget how you did it. That, that common thing, if a guy has a big day at the plate or a team has a good day with runners in scoring position and two outs, don't forget how you did it and do it again. Cliff Pennington will hit for the pitcher spot here. Cliff one for three last night with a single and he's been struggling to get some at bats lately three for 17 over the last eight games. Just 21 plate appearances in those eight games. Second base side, here comes Ramiro Pena, a little flip to Freeman, and that's the inning. Here it works a 1 2 3. We're through six here. Brad Ziegler coming on, the Diamondbacks lead it 5 3. with the Braves. It's our Chevron probable matchup for Friday. Trevor Cahill back on the hill for the Diamondbacks. Kevin Slowey, who has pitched a very well for the Marlins. Just the one win, but you see the ERA actually both of these guys with the sub three ERA. And I talked to Trevor Cahill today. He said, you know, I still feel like every other outing I'm fighting with myself. He's looking for the proper arm slot. That's the thing that he's looking to do is to cut down on the walks, be able to have a more consistent delivery time in and time out, guys. Jody, thanks very much. I'll tell you where uh, Brad Ziegler's arm slot is coming from, underground. And with a day off tomorrow in Miami, 
Kirk Gibson will go inning by inning here, Bob, and it's Brad Ziegler's turn. Yeah, Ziegler hasn't pitched for a couple of days. I have to retrain him. He's used to throwing <laughs> on a regular basis. Leads the National League in appearances today, his 23rd. He'll face Andrelton Simmons, Justin Upton, and Freddie Freeman here in the seventh with the Diamondbacks leading 5 3. Brad uh, worked on Saturday and Sunday against the Phillies. He threw only six pitches in two hitless outings. Simmons won for three, a single back in the third. Gets by Brad's glove. Martin Prado is there. One away in the seventh. Simmons won for four. Here comes Justin Upton. He's walked his last two times up. That is a ground out number 41 on the season for Brad Ziegler. 41 ground outs, six flyouts. <laughs> Just ridiculous numbers. Smattering of booze for Justin here. We've recreated the uptown thing out there with some Braves fans. First pitch swing, and there's the base hit. Upton one for two. He's been on base three times today. Yeah, that's a typical hit against Brad Ziegler. Usually a ground ball that just happens to find a hole somewhere in the infield. No concern on the face of Brad Ziegler out there on the mound. He knows he's one ground ball away from getting out of this inning. Freddie Freeman, a two-run double his last time up. He lines it into left. Tying runs aboard for the Braves here in the seventh with one out. Freeman's been on base three times today. Walk, a double, and a single. Catcher, Brian McCann. Brian McCann, one for three, single back in the second. Upped it on second, Freeman on first. Twenty feet away. When Brad does that little inside move thing. Looks painful. Yeah, it takes on a whole different dimension when you're a submarine pitcher trying to do that inside move to second base. Out of play, 0-2 now. Of course, the idea is to make it look as much like the beginning of your delivery to home plate as you possibly can, hoping to lure that runner off the bag a little further at second base, but not easy to do when you have an unorthodox delivery like Brad's. the strikeout two down here in the seventh a real nice sequence there everything down 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 ultimately ends up sneaking that backdoor slider over the outside corner from that unorthodox delivery we've been talking about so two on two out here is BJ Upton who's 0 for 3 Upton steps in here. He is three for his last 25 with 13 strikeouts over that span. Now at 147 on the year.
Prado at second. They go the short way to DD. A little close there, but they get the out. That's the inning. We'll go to the bottom of the seventh. CenturyLink, your link to what's next. DD Gregorius coming up. Stop by this month's participating Sierra Vista Cox Retail Store or Fry's Food Store in Tucson. And you can enter to win two seats on the Fan Express bus. You'll get a round-trip transportation to a Diamondbacks game on June 8th or June 23rd. And for more info, you can visit FoxSportsArizona.com. Top of the order up for the Diamondbacks. Para, Gregorius, and Goldie here in the seventh against Corey Guerin. Diamondbacks lead at 5-3. They've been out hit here 9-8. Trying to get away and make it a winning homestand here. Left field. Drops in front of Schaefer. Lead off man on. Toronto Parra on base for the third time today. Two singles and a walk. He is a nudge. <laughs> David Hernandez, who has looked terrific lately. Day off tomorrow, so Kirk Gibson has the luxury of just taking an inning by inning with his bullpen. Didi, big RBI single his last time up. He's one for three. Red system last year. Didi was a Southern League All-Star. Baseball America called him the best defensive shortstop in the league. By July, he was in AAA, did well there. His manager at Louisville was David Bell, the brother of Diamondbacks farm director Mike Bell. And David said about Didi, you know, you have to watch him to put your finger on it, but the best way to describe it is he plays the game at a different speed. He has the ability to really slow the game down for a younger player, and you can't teach that. James Hoy says he went it's 0 and 2. One and two now. There are a lot of different ways to define that slowing the game down. I, I think back to the movie Any Given Sunday when Jamie Foxx goes into the game for the first time as a quarterback and he's hearing every word the defensive team is saying and his own teammates are yelling at him and the fans are screaming and the band's playing and the cheerleaders are cheering and he hears every bit of it. 
the inability to focus on the task at hand, and that's something that uh, is very tough to teach. Some guys just come about it naturally. D.D. appears to be one of those guys. Of course, Jamie Foxx went into the huddle and threw up. Yeah. So he, we haven't had that yet. did that. <laughs> Best part of that movie is the inches speech. Al Pacino. There goes Pardo. He bluffs and holds up, and that one got John Hirschbeck. Maybe the inside of the right thigh there just above the knee. You can almost be guaranteed it hit an area where there was no padding. Man. Oh, man. man, two cushion bank shot there. <laughs> you don't say that with much compassion. <laughs> That's because I still have bruises on the inside of both thighs. I know exactly what that feels like. Yeah, yeah, I'm a firm believer that the umpire should go back to the big pillow chest protector. Yeah. They used to kind of hide behind that thing. They're much more protected, especially their arms, their hands. Tucked it up underneath their uh, Well, wasn't the there wasn't there a point at which one league had it and one league didn't? Yeah. I, I think the American League kept it longer than the National League did. And, I mean, if I was umpire, I'd build a brick wall and just kind of peek through it. But uh, basically, the umpires wear pretty much the same equipment that you see the catchers wearing right there in front of him. A lot of exposed areas when you get down in that crouch and foul balls start rattling around back there. So a 2-2 count now on D.D. Gregorius, or Arnold Parra at first. Look out, Steve Sachs. D.D.'s trying to take everybody out here. Saxy with a quick feet. Well, we talked about unorthodox delivery on the part of Brad Ziegler. Here's some unusual things going out there himself. He just kind of slides into his delivery to home plate. Just kind of starts leaning and barely picks that foot up off the ground. Kind of falls into his delivery. Third base side, Francisco in front of Simmons, hard throw, and they get Gregorius, par at a second. Hey fans, we invite you to play Kachinko by signing up at one of the 16 interactive kiosks right here at Chase Field during any Diamondbacks regular season home game. Paul Goldschmidt now, Goldie doubled in his first two at bats, struck out his last time up, it's two for three. It's also scored a run. Came in at 310. Now he's up to 317. Drives it to right. Justin Upton. Can't get it. Parr had to hold up. He'll stop at third. Matt Williams puts on the brakes. But Paul Goldschmidt stands at second with his third double today. They rule it a double. A nice effort by Justin Upton. Just tips off the webbing of his glove down there in the right field corner. Three doubles on the game. I think I like that one the best. That ball was smoked to right field. And Parra had to hold up with only one out. So Matt Williams put the brakes on big time down there at third. And they'll not mess with Chavez anymore today. Eric has had a tremendous day. RBI single back in the first and a big two out two run double in the fifth. First base open they'll walk him. And they'll work to Cody Ross. Three doubles for Paul Goldschmidt is a new career high. Big day for Goldie. So an intentional walk for Eric Chavez. He's on base for the third time today. And with one out, they'll talk about how they want to work to Cody Ross here. Roger McDowell.
Our APS Energy All-Star Award today goes to the whole Diamondbacks team batting with runners in scoring position. Look at this. The previous eight games, they had been five for 56. Today, five for seven. Wow. And now John Hirschbeck is out to the mound. And he's going to end the conference out there. Hey, when you look at him from a distance in the front, it looks like Cody Ross is wearing a ski boot on that left leg. Got a pad on the inside of his left foot, the pad up the left shin. He has been taking a beating on that leg. Of course, he uh, missed most of spring training with a strained calf, so the wheels aren't uh, quite what they might be for Cody. He's up there now with a one out, and the base is loaded. Diamondbacks lead at 5 3. Look out inside, 1 0. Cody is one for three RBI single his last time up. Came into today hitting 367 over his last 10 games. So he's had a very productive month. Bob, you're 90 feet away from Tacos. Oh, believe me, I know it. <laughs> <laughs> My mouth is watering right now. In a taco drought. <laughs> Francisco at third steps on the bag, throws it across, and that ends the inning. Diamondbacks get the bases loaded. They can't get a run in. It's 5-3. We'll go to the game. Of Budweiser. Then game two is 640, but before then, we'll be outside for the big street festival between games. Music, beer garden, food trucks, the whole thing, all right outside Chase Field. Plus, when you buy a ticket for both games, you'll get free D-Bucks. You can use them inside the ballpark on merchandise and concessions. So call us now, 602-462-4600, or log on to dbacks.com slash doubleheader, and we'll see you here May 27th, Memorial Day for two. Against Texas, Matt Reynolds worked the sixth, Brad Ziegler the seventh, and now here in the eighth, it's David Hernandez. And David, about as good as we've seen him this year in the ball game yesterday, came in to strike out the pinch hitter Jordan Schaefer, gave up a single to Simmons, and then struck out Brian McCann as a pinch hitter, and Justin Upton to end the inning. Juan Francisco is 0 for 3 with three strikeouts, and he's behind quickly 0 and 1. 36 strikeouts now in 88 at bats this season for Juan Francisco. And 
now it's 0 2. Braves able with Chris Johnson over there to have a little right left platoon at third, should they choose. But Francisco's got to cut down on those strikeouts to stay in there more, and there it is. Four bats, four strikeouts. A little golden sombrero scenario. Perfect on the day. Well, at least he mixed it up this time. He swung at a pitch in the dirt instead of a fastball up over his head. <laughs> Here's Ramiro Pena, one for three, singled his last time up. And we've talked about it throughout the series. Uh, I mean, Greg Walker, the hitting coach, and certainly the manager, Freddie Gonzalez, would probably like to see some more contact from their hitters, but they understand that that's what they are. They're a free swinging, swing for the fences kind of a team, and they're going to punch out a bunch. Ramiro Pena, two for four, a couple of singles now. Pitcher spot coming up. There's no one on deck. Jordan Schaefer is the leadoff man. He's already out there. Now Evan Gaddis is coming on. So Gaddis will hit for the pitcher here. Better late than never. No batting glove there, BB, but a whole lot of the chalk. Evan Gaddis is about as old school as they come. Here in number 24, Evan Gaddis. So Evan Gaddis will hit for the pitcher. He became a winter ball sensation in Venezuela. Hit 303 with 16 homers, and they nicknamed him El Oso Blanco, the White Bear. And that is right on the money. It sure is. He'd probably go wrestle alligators with me on an off day. And he'd also do that without any batting gloves. Got to be careful here. This is a guy with tremendous power, and right now he represents the tying run at the plate with one out. I asked Evan Gaddis uh, the other day about that exaggerated crouch that he hits out of, and he said he didn't even realize it. It just kind of evolved. He found himself taking a lot of extra hitting, and one day uh, the guy that was throwing batting practice asked him, when did you start hitting out of a crouch? He said, I didn't even realize I was doing it, but it felt comfortable, and he stuck with it. It's very well, it's, it's more Bagwell than Bagwell. But the legs look very Bagwell-like. Yeah. Gaddis has played in eight different ballparks this season. And he's already homered in five of them. Pretty good first tour through the league. Chopper Gregorius slides into second, drops the ball. Everybody's safe. Way up over the mound, it came down right near the second base bag. Didi tried to slide up and throw all in one motion, and left fielder Jordan Schaefer just dropped it on the transfer there. Yeah, frustrated with himself. He thought he should have had a double play. At worst, you get the force at second base right there, but the ball just came out as he reached into his glove and tried to find a handle. That is fielder's choice, E6. So Pena to second on the air. Gaddis aboard on the fielder's choice. Two on, one out. Here's Jordan Schaefer. Braves with a tying runs on base here in the eighth. Exactly a hurried pace in the Atlanta bullpen. Schaefer is two for four today. He singled twice and scored twice. Oh, and two.
Right field, Gerardo Parra. Two down. Here's Andrelton Simmons. He's one for four, single back in the third. Shortstop, Andrelton Simmons. David Hernandez unscored upon in his last five games, allowing only three hits over that span with five strikeouts. Opponents hit 167 against him, but he's got one more out to get here in the eighth. He's been going to that breaking ball more, and it's been very effective early in the count. Yeah, that flat slider, it's its meant to be a get-me-over pitch just to jump ahead in the count. He also throws it off the plate low and away to get some swings and misses, but uh, we haven't seen as much of the curveball. It looks like he has better command of that slider, and he's sticking with it. 0-2. Oh Boy, Hirschbeck will expand the zone from time to time. Oh, that's a gorgeous pitch. Yeah, Miggy just didn't catch it real good that time, kind of tracked the ball right out of the zone, but when it crossed the front of the plate, it looked like a good pitch. A strike away here. Good gas that time by David Hernandez. His velocity is starting to creep back up again. 96 on that last fastball up and away. He can hump it up there. And cool plays of the game. Anytime you get two out hits to drive in runs, that's pretty cool. Diamondbacks haven't done a lot of it this year, having a big day today in that situation. Eric Chavez and Cody Ross are featured hitters in that section. Both with two out RBI hits in the fifth. Chavez the two run double, Ross the RBI single, and for the third time in this series, the new pitcher for the Braves is Anthony Vavaro. He'll face Miguel Montero, Martin Prado, and A.J. Pollock here in the Arizona 8th. D-backs lead at 5-3, each team with 10 hits. Boy, Bob. He's just up there hacking, man. First pitch. A 
and did hit that ball hard in his last at bat, a line drive right to Francisco at third base, and he's done a lot of that, but he's also uh, gotten himself out a lot of times, swinging at pitchers pitches. I mean, bang, just like that, 0 and 2. That's the way it goes when you're slumping. Seems like every time you step in that batter's box, you're in the hole. Heath Bell, who was tremendous last night. Both David Hernandez and Heath Bell terrific in the eighth and ninth last night. See if he can duplicate that here this afternoon and make it a four and three homestand. Mickey's back even two and two. It's full. He was down 0 2, now it's 3 and 2. And his first three at bats of this ball game, Miggy saw, saw a total of nine pitches, so step in the right direction here, running the count full. Yeah, that's why I kind of went, oh, the, the, when he got up there and swung at the first one, it, it had been like that all day. Lifts it up in the air to left. Schaefer. Camps out underneath. One away here in the eighth. Fox Saturday Baseball returns this week. Joey Votto and the Reds head to Philadelphia. They'll take on Chase Utley and the Phillies. Fox Saturday Baseball returns this week at 12.30 p.m. Pacific time. Martin Prado, one for three, singled in the second. Martin, 7 for 24 on the homestand. Martin Prado was asked a lot this week, of course, about Justin Upton. Says he's never going to be able to be Justin Upton. He says, I'm being honest, I'm just being realistic. I'm not going to be able to do whatever he does because we're just two different kinds of players. And Prado said what people don't see is what he brings, that he brings something different to the table. One of two now. I was talking to a member of the Braves traveling party about the trade, and he said when he heard about it, uh, obviously they were excited. Yeah, we're getting Justin Upton. And then he said the other shoe fell, and we said, who are we giving up? Yeah. And when the name Martin Prado came up, uh, a lot of people in those blue shirts were very sad to see him go. Martin says he just will not compare himself with Upton. It's just not going to happen, he says. One and two now. Dropped it in there. Two up and two down in the eighth. Center field, A.J. Pollock. A.J. Pollock go for three so far. A.J. four for 22 in the homestand. Chavez is playing in his 16th season of the big league says he's got a hard time imagining AJ Pollock is not going to be with the Diamondbacks now and for the duration Chavez said right field Justin Upton right there a one two three eighth for Vavaro and we'll go to the ninth closer coming on with a two run lead.
back at Chase Field for the ninth inning. The Heath Bell experience came on last night with a two run lead in the ninth and shut the door. He'll try and do that again here today. A couple of punch outs in that ninth inning yesterday, including Evan Gaddis and Dan Ugla. Yeah, this would be a good one to put a bow on and get on that plane for Miami. Dominant in his last outing, one inning, two strikeouts, his fifth save. Since last Tuesday, Heath Bell has converted four of five save opportunities. But he's got some work to do here. Justin Upton, Freddie Freeman, and Brian McCann. Justin Upton has been on base the last three times he's been up. Two walks and a single. He scored a run. Strikeouts and 11 at bats. Oh, and two. Heath Bell has allowed runs to score in just three of his last 15 appearances. 14 and two thirds over that span. Two walks and 19 strikeouts. Out of play. Heath has said before he's trying to get as far away as possible from last year. Says he knows it'll probably take 10 more saves for people to forget about last year. And he says, don't freak out if he gives up a hit or two along the way. Everybody should calm down. It's okay. Going to be fine here. I've done this before, he says. Well, he may not be able to put last year behind him until after we sweep through South Florida. That's going to be interesting this yeah. weekend if he comes in a similar situation here at Marlins ballpark. Ball down there at the bottom of the zone and 93 up and obviously looking for something else. He's seen a lot of breaking pitches in two strike counts in this series. That time just froze on the fastball. We spot that fastball there and throw that curveball the way he's been throwing it. Freddie Freeman been on base three times. Walk, two run double, and a single. Patrick Corbin taking care of business. The amazing rewards credit card from NBAZ. Learn more at NBArizona.com.
Diamondback starters to open 6-0. It's a pretty impressive list. Patrick worked last night, seven innings of three hit ball. Did have five walks, but had five strikeouts. And we asked you about uh, what should be the nickname on the AT&T Twitter poll question. The results coming up in the postgame show. Heath Bell ahead here, 0 and 2. 23,524. Good crowd here at Chase on a Wednesday afternoon for some Diamondbacks baseball. Looking for that 4 and 3 homestand. Left field. Cody Ross giving chase and he can't get there. It's a fair ball. Freddie Freeman will stop at second. And the tying run will come to the play here in the ninth. Well, we've talked about hitters that have the ability to take a late swing and foul off pitches and stay alive in the bat. I think that's what Freddie Freeman was trying to do that time. Just get a bat on the ball, stay alive, and he keeps it fair down into the left field corner for extra bases. Nice effort by Cody Ross. So with a one out, here comes Brian McCann. McCann is one for four, singled in the second. He struck out his last time up. Freeman, Freeman aboard at second with a one out. D-backs do have a base open down there at first. McCann, obviously a very dangerous power hitter. B.J. Upton in the on-deck circle has struggled somewhat in this series and today. But you never like to put that tying or winning run on base. I think they're going to pitch him very carefully, but Heath Bell would like to come back in the at bat here and retire Brian McCann if at all possible. There is B.J. Upton. He struck out twice today, 0 for 4. Hard to second. Martin Prado is there. Two down. Freeman to third. Here's B.J. Upton. Center fielder B.J. Upton. Struck out in the second. Struck out looking in the fourth. Rounded out in the sixth. Fielder's choice out in the seventh. Families here in attendance. Prado, the backhander. And that wraps it up. Once again, Heath Bell shuts the door, and the Diamondbacks win it 5 3. 
They take two of three from the Braves, and it's a four and three homestand. We head to Miami with a win. A well, nice comeback in this series, partner. The way the Braves came in here in game one and swung the bat against Wade Miley and others out of that D backs bullpen, you wondered what was going to happen the rest of the series, but the Diamondbacks settled in nicely, and today an outstanding ball game. And finally, another W for Ian Kennedy, his first since beating the St. Louis Cardinals here on opening day, and the Diamondbacks improved to five and four when Ian starts a game. He certainly looked good at times today. And the Diamondbacks are looking good with a 5-3 win. Todd Walsh has more on center field. Let's start the postgame show, Todd. Steve, we appreciate that. Guys, I think it's obvious and clear to say Justin Upton won the moment, but the Diamondbacks won the series. As you just mentioned, they, takes, they take games two and three. We have an abbreviated version of Diamondbacks Live presented by Century coming up in mere moments. Time enough, though, for Jody Jackson for some field-level interviews and so much more. Plus, we'll put a bow on our way in Wednesday. Stick around for that and more coming up in a matter of moments. The Diamondbacks defeat the Atlanta Braves in game three. Getaway day 5-3. More to come from Chase Field right after this.